Welcome to Jack's Tech Corner. This is a Windows Server 2008 R2 training video. If you enjoy this video, please go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, and click on the link for online learning. I have a great Windows Server 2008 class that will get you started, get you ready, and even give you a little bit more advanced topics to put into play with your Windows Server 2008 installation. Now, let's go ahead and get started. In today's lesson, I want to show you how you would give your Windows Server 2008 the look and feel of Windows 7. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, in the event that you're running something like a Citrix server or any uh, remote desktop client that's logging into your servers and you want to give them the look and feel of Windows 7, you'd want to go ahead and change the default view on your server to reflect that. I know we actually use some end computing devices on our servers and what that is is just a thumb terminal on the user end and it goes right in and logs into the server in the morning and when it does that it brings up the desktop of the server. So at this point what we do there is we make it look like Windows 7 so the end user feels that they're getting that Windows 7 experience. So how do we do that on our server? Well, let's go ahead and get started. First, go ahead, right down here, you want to click on the server manager. Now in the server manager, we're going to add a new feature. Right here, so we click on features on the left and come over to the right and click on add a feature. When you do that, click on desktop experience. It's going to also tell you to add the ink and the handwriting services, just to add required features. We don't have a choice. We're going to add those in and click on next. Then install. At this point, it's going to have to install and we'll have things then like such as like media player. You'll have things like the themes so the user can actually have the themes and the experience of Windows 7, even though it's running on your Windows Server 2008 backend but the user really doesn't need to know that. And that's why we set ours up this way. Okay, so now what's going to tell you is a restart is pending. So we're going to go ahead and restart the server and bring it back up here, and then we'll show you exactly what this Windows 7 experience looks like. Okay, so once the computer reboots, we can see that the installation wizard comes up again, the configuration wizard, and now we can see the desktop experience is installed, and the ink and handwriting services, if you're ever going to use that, is also installed. Click close on here. Okay, once all everything's loaded up and it's ready to go, now we have to go to our start button once again. Go to administrative tools and services. Let's open this up a little bit here so we can see what's going on. Now what we're going to do here is this is sorted in alphabetical order. So what we're going to do now is just slide down here and you're going to look for themes. Because by default you can see here that themes is disabled. So we'll double click that. And we're going to say automatic. So it starts automatic. Apply that. And then we'll start it. And click OK. OK. Now once we do a restart after having the um, extra themes installed. Let's go back here. Okay, once we go through, then we had the features that we installed a new feature on here. So we have the feature now installed for the new uh, desktop experience. Then, as I said, we went into our administrative tools and then services. And in services, we just went down through here and we turn on themes which is right here and we set that to automatic and then all it took was a simple restart of the computer and once we restart our server now you can see we have the Windows 7 look and feel with the arrow with the toolbars and everything here Now a lot of people will tell you that this does take a little bit of memory but I don't think it's really enough to really worry about especially if we're serving up remote desktop clients to uh, our users or we're using um, maybe Citrix to show the desktop or as I said we're using the end computer systems to actually uh, show a basically a virtual desktop through the end computing software 
then we want to have that Windows 7 look and feel because that's what our users are used to, right? That's what our clients are used to doing. Then you can always go on to personalize, get more themes online, and you can download other themes such as this one here we downloaded and actually download this one here too. There we go. So there you have it. So is it a necessity? Probably not. Um, unless, like I said, you're serving up a Windows experience to your clients or users. So once again, please, uh, if you want to learn more about Windows Server 2008, you know, you're just getting into it. Obviously, you're watching this YouTube video because you have a uh, need to know something about Windows Server 2008 or you're uh, interested in learning. Check out my website. Once again, jackstechcorner.com. We've had a lot of people already come through the Windows Server 2008 R2 class. The class is 24 hours, 7 days a week. You work very much on your own pace. And I am available for any questions through the actual class itself. You can just message me and I will give you some answers. Once you're completed, you do earn a certificate of completion. And you can use that with your resume. So it works out very, very well uh, for you in the end. And we've had a lot of people who had great success with that. Uh, having that certificate that they have some Windows Server 2008 training to get them started. Also, there is a DVD available on the same site. It's Windows Server 2008 on DVD. So you do get uh, some video trainings on there, but you do not gain the certificate at the end. That's the only difference. So you have two ways of uh, learning, and I hope you learn with me here. Thank you very, very much for watching this episode of Windows Server 2008 R2 and the Windows 7 desktop themes. And I hope you uh, watch more videos as I produce those. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.